Imagine this. You pull up to the supermarket. You grab your cart. You roll up to aisle six. There's a woman shopping and you pull up and you say, hey, I have a question for you. What do you think of salesmen? What do you think her response is going to be? You see, 96% of people do not like salespeople, but I'm here to tell you something that's just like a little bit different. Salesmen are not salesmen. You see, we were mislabeled from day one. We should have never been called salesmen. We should have been called servants because we're in the business of serving people. You see, there's so many benefits of a sales professional. We're able to not only serve that individual, we're not only able to educate that individual, but we're able to give them a convenience. You see, nobody wants to be sold. Nobody wants to buy anything, but people do want to get involved and people do want to acquire things. Now, during this training, what I'm going to be sharing with you is my absolute certain beliefs on why salesmen should have never been called salespeople in the beginning, but also all the nasty words that you use in your vocabulary that creates fear with the client. What is fear? Fear is false evidence appearing real. It's the greatest enemy. Nobody wants to get screwed. Nobody wants to make the wrong decision. Behind their thoughts is, wait a second, this sounds way too good to be true. What is the catch? Nobody wants to get taken advantage of. So as sales professionals, as servants, in the business of servantship, what our number one goal is, is to actually help them like us, make it make sense, because a confused mind always says no. So what we're gonna be covering today are all the nasty words that we have to completely eliminate from our vocabulary. We're gonna talk about why salesmen are not salesmen. So let's go into our first nasty word, sell or sold. You see, hey, I just sold this guy. Hey, I just, I, I got sold, right? It's just a nasty way of thinking. Nobody wants to get sold. Nobody wants to be getting a sell. What we want to do is we want to help them acquire or help get them involved with our product and service. You see George down the street, he was a little dramatic, but since we were able to get him involved with this program, he was able to actually save money on a bill he was never going to cancel. I'm gonna tell you a story right now. Back in the 1940s, J. Douglas Edwards, the father of modern day selling, was at a big all-time sales convention. And he was there with Paul Hart Harvey, a very notable radio announcer. And they were at this awards party and it came down to the last award for the salesman of the year selling real estate. And while they were announcing this individual, they said, hey, this guy made $40,000 this year. And the crowd kind of looks around and they're like, 40 grand? You know, there's individuals that made 70, 80, 100 grand selling real estate this year. How was he the salesman of the year? And they call this gentleman on stage and he's got a stick. And they realize, wow, this gentleman's blind. He accepts his award. He gives a speech and Mr. Edwards and Mr. Harvey said, we gotta go find that guy. And they pull up and they said, how were you able to sell this many homes? He said, you see, I didn't sell anybody anything. I was able to actually help them acquire, but I could never see these homes through my own eyes. I could only see them through the families that I served eyes. You see, people are not going to do business with you because they understand what you're saying. They do this because they feel understood. So we are not going to sell anybody anything. People are not going to get sold. We are gonna help them acquire or help them get involved. Your next nasty word is buy. Nobody wants to buy anything. You see, we buy things all the time. We don't wanna buy things, but what we do want to do is we want to own them. See, if I can give somebody the ability of ownership, that's a lot better than asking somebody to buy something. Our next nasty word is deal. You might be like, deal? I have a really good deal. That How is deal a nasty word? You see, we've all gotten into these deals before where sometimes it's a good deal, but also there's other times where it's a bad deal. So instead of the word deal, what we want to give them is an opportunity or the ability to transact. So I did not do X amount of deals. I had X amount of transactions or I had an opportunity to actually get these families involved rather than saying, hey, I've got this great deal for you today. Let's get into our next nasty word. And I love this nasty word and how we are able to replace it. And that nasty word is appointment. Hey, I'm gonna set an appointment with you for 7 p.m. Here's the deal. Here's the opportunity is people are canceling appointments. An appointment is not something that you want to deal with. So instead of saying, hey, I'm gonna actually come to an appointment for you, what I like to say is I'm gonna pop by and visit. You see all these nasty words that will create fear are reasons why somebody's not going to move forward. Now let me break it down to the ridiculous on why we want to replace the nasty word with glamour words or words that will build excitement during the presentation. 
Because when we use these nasty words, they have that fear in the back of their mind not to actually do anything. You see, when you knock on somebody's door, when you call them on the phone, their anxiety is up here and their certainty is down there. Through asking the right questions with utilizing the right vocabulary, you're shifting to the actual certainty being here and the anxiety being down here. Let's talk about our next nasty word, the monthly payment or the total payment. People do not want payments. We want to replace that word with amount. So no, the new monthly amount would be X rather than your monthly payment being X. You see, every single thing that you do during your presentation will either help you or hurt you. There is no neutral within that process. You noticed I used another glamour word there and that was presentation. One of the nastiest, nasty, nasty, nasty words that I've ever heard is the word pitch. You see, nobody wants to be pitched. A pitch is a baseball throw. A pitch is an angle of a roof. A pitch is a soccer field in Europe. We do not pitch people, we present. We have presentations to be able to ask the right questions to blend complete opposites like communication, not what I say, not how I say it, but how I can make them feel, and persuasion, which is asking the right questions to solve their problems. You see, sales broken down to the ridiculous is the art of combining and weaving opposites the entire time. Communication, persuasion, trust, respect, aggressive, kind, assertive, nice, egotistically humble. You see, I'm blending these complete opposites to create the decision, which is otherwise known as closing. Okay, how about this next nasty word? And the word is sign. I just need you to sign this contract right here, miss. Can you sign the contract for me? You see, that's going to create fear. What have we always been told about signing things? You see, people are not gonna sign, but we are gonna have them okay, approve, or authorize the forms. You see, I'm not signing any sort of contract, I'm okaying the forms. They're okay with okaying it, approving it, authorizing it, or endorsing it. And then another nasty word is contract, right? Oh, I'm not signing any sort of contracts. This is a contract, right? People will tend to make that a much bigger decision than it really needs to be. So no, I do not have a contract. I have forms, I have paperwork. I have an agreement for you to actually endorse right here. You see, what we're doing is we're replacing these nasty words that create fear. That's the greatest enemy is people are not going to make Make a decision unless they feel comfortable, unless they have that feeling that I'm making the right decision. And that's your job in servantship, as we are not going to call it salesmanship anymore, in servantship, is how can I be the assistant buyer, take their hand and actually lead them through this process. Your next nasty word is customer. You see, I have zero customers. Although I've been able to help serve thousands of families, none of them are my customers. These are families that I serve or companies that I've helped get involved with my product or service. You see, when we can refer to the customers as the families that we can serve, then you're starting from a genuine place of servantship to actually helping somebody get to that next step. Your next nasty word is cheaper. People do not want things that are cheaper, right? I have a cheaper amount than the competitors. I have a cheaper price than the competitors. No. We want to replace the word cheaper with more economical or most economical. We have a much more economical option for you guys to actually save money on a bill you were never going to cancel. You see, Judy, she was a little dramatic, but what she was able to tell me was we were able to actually help her situation. You see, when you're utilizing these glamour words, when you're replacing the nasty words, understand that it's your body language, your tonality, and just a very 37% the words that you speak. 55% is body language, 38% is the tonality. It's not what I say, it's not how I say it, it's how I can make them feel. And it's asking the right questions to solve these families' problems. Let's get into another nasty word that I hear too many professionals or like, I'm a, I'm a sales trainer, but they use this all the time. Please eliminate this from your vocabulary. And that phrase is, to be completely honest with you, Bill, you know, um, here's what it is, right? That's just like, sounds like you're lying. To be honest, get rid of that. We want to say to be blunt. You know, actually, George, may I just have your permission to be blunt with you? Or to be frank? Or to be blunt? It's more like I'm able to gather their attention without saying fear-producing words like to be honest with you. Your next nasty word is commission. You know, hey, what was your commission on that sale? How much did you make? 
See, I don't work off a of commission. Commission is a nasty word. We have a fee for our service. It's a little bit different, where if we're able to help your situation, that's all we work for is a fee for service. All right, your final nasty word of today's segment is going to be the word problem, right? I have this problem, right? No, you don't have a problem. Stop calling it a problem. You have a challenge, and these are challenges that you can overcome. The sales professional is the only creature that faces rejection on a day-to-day -day basis. You're highest highs, your lowest lows could come in a 24 hour period. And you're going to have a lot of these challenges. How you're going to react to these challenges is up to you. Are you going to get stuck in the danger zone where you're sitting there like, oh, I don't know if I can do it. I have all this self doubt. I don't know if I'm going to be good for this. Or you're going to be striving for these motivators, which we call the comfort zone, money, achievement, recognition, self acceptance. You see, most of you guys are paralyzed. Let's not get paralyzed. Stop focusing on what you're doing wrong. You don't have any problems. You have challenges. I want you to focus on the things that you're doing right. The more that you focus on the things that you're doing right, the more that you can actually become that perfect servant, servantship. You know, I started this video is why salesmen aren't salesmen. We are not salesmen. I am not here to sell you anything. I'm here to get you involved. I'm here to help you acquire. I'm here to serve. I'm here to educate. I'm here to give you a convenience, a convenience of making a decision in your own home, a convenience at moving the pace that you want to move, the ability to serve you and the ability to educate you to making the decision that's best for you and your family. That's the best part of servantship. Salesmen should have never been called salesmen. I'm not a salesman. We were mislabeled, right? 100 years ago when they said, hey, you're a salesman. What's crazy is I read these books about servants back in the 1930s and 40s where everybody served door to door. Everybody helped people get involved door to door. They literally helped people get involved. They used to go door to door in Long Island, New York, and they used to get people involved with manure all over their grass. And his famous line was, it'll only take five minutes. You see, the salesman should have never been called a salesman because we are not salesmen. So stop labeling yourself as a salesman. What you are is a servant. We're in the business of serving. We're in the business of educating. We're in the business of helping people get involved and we're in the ability of giving you a convenience for your home and for your family. To the families that I serve, to the fellow servants that I serve, I'm here for you. I'm rooting for you. Let's go. If you wanna check out the rest of the nasty words, make sure you like this video. Make sure to subscribe for your boy. We're making plays. We're almost at 20K. Super thankful for all of you guys. We will see you on the scoreboard.